Good morning, and welcome to the fifth installment of Calugula Reads His Classics, uh, coming to you from the heart of Hollywood. Um, as I said yesterday, I have tons and tons and tons of zombie stories from all the way back to age 10 and, and on, so uh, probably be some good zombie stuff coming up in the near future until I dig through some other stuff, but um, I found this one. This was actually uh, later in my zombie writings. I have a bunch of stories that are pages and pages long, so I wouldn't be able to do them in this kind of five, six minute um, format. So uh, the one I found is a later one. So my writing is actually a little bit better. Um, again, going into this, I haven't looked at this for years and years until right now scanning it. Um, so I don't know how good it is. Um, so we'll just read through and see what happens. But this is a zombie story called A New Beginning. And it was written, I'm going to guess, 16, uh, age 16, age 17, somewhere in that range. So probably my uh, junior, senior year of high school. So, <clears throat> a new beginning. It was a new beginning for my family. We had survived the end of it all. Survival had been our top priority. We didn't know if we were the only humans left. We would have to start over, start again. Now it begins. My family was home that first day. The news revealed startling evidence of missing people being found after weeks of searching. The people were partially devoured and slowly decaying of an unknown disease. The program then focused on a reporter for the local news station. He was standing outside the graveyard that was located only a few blocks from our home. From inside the gates, there were sounds of life. Behind the reporter, figures began to appear from within the vast place of rest. This report was live. My wife, half asleep on the living room sofa, turned to the television. Apparently there is some kind of hoax being played out here at the Eternal Silent Cemetery. The reporter turned to the gates. The cameraman screamed some obscenity to someone off camera. The reporter turned back to the camera as the gigantic gates behind him exploded. Good lord, this guy over here bit me! The cameraman was yelling from pain. The reporter was attacked from all sides as the silent resting place screamed into life. The camera record remained on, recording the violence and death that was accompanied by the bellowing of pain. The camera finally shut off, leaving only snow and the relaxing sizzle of its falling. My wife stared at the television, still not fully awake, wondering what had just happened. I looked to her and then back to the dead television. A knock on the door interrupted our peace. I got up from the sofa, and as if in slow motion, the front door blew open, extinguishing the silence completely. A huge gust of wind was the cause. Following the wind was a horde of figures, blackened by the night. Who is that? I asked, now extremely frightened. I focused on the pack, trying to define their features. They were most definitely not human. I slammed the door quickly, realizing that the back entrance to the house was unlocked. My wife stood up, rushing to the window. What is it? Go get the kids, I screamed. I rushed through the massive house, passing the home sweet home sign, the shelves containing family memorabilia, and the rest of my belongings, not even stopping to think that I would not see them again. The back door was wide open when I finally arrived to close it. My heart began to pound at an accelerated rate. I received air only in labored gasps. I mustered a breath. Get the car keys, I yelled to my wife, praying that she'd gotten the children and that she had heard my call. I reached for the light switch and took a deep breath. The screen door began to slap the house from the raging wind. It was silent in the kitchen. I pushed the switch up and was bathed in the safety of light. I reached for the moving door and quickly slammed it shut. A noise behind me made me turn, ready to greet my wife. A figure stood in the doorway, hidden in the shadows. A putrid stench filled my nostrils, a smell as if a corpse had just been exhumed, mixed with the pungent odor of decay. I squinted to see the figure, taking only a moment to realize what it was. A hoax, is what the reporter had said. He was very wrong. Had he believed, perhaps he would be alive. I stood there for a split second, not registering the, da registering the danger I was in. The figure, a lone, unknowing stranger, a victim, taken over by the urge to consume, began to advance on me. I ran from the room, barely escaping fate. The house was alive with racket. Every window began to shatter, every figure entering, every human dying. My wife hurried down the stairs, dragging the two sleepy children with her. I cried to her, losing control of our almost hopeless situation. She slapped me across the face, needing to take me to the chil needing me to take the children and to escape to safety. Safety, Daddy asked my youngest, "Is it the Fourth of July?" Upstairs, I said, not fully understanding my child's question. Survival was our top priority. I had worked for my family. I could not lose them, not for anything. 
We stumbled up the steps, looking behind to watch for the figures. I took the rear as my wife ascended the staircase. It seemed to take an eternity to reach the top, where the railing began or ended, the one that the children had slid down so many times, but never again. I lost my footing at the last step, making me tumble down the stairs. I fell to the bottom of the staircase, banging my head on the narrow wall. I looked around, remembering a nightmare of childhood as the figures came to me. I sat on the bottom stair, watching death approach. My wife screamed at me, bringing me out of my daze. I looked up the tiny stairwell and then back to the situation I was in. I brought myself to my feet and rushed up the stairs. Go, go, I screamed. When I reached the top, my children and wife were out of sight. I looked behind me and could not see the main floor. The figures were on their way up. I found my family huddled in the closet at the end of the hall. Tears were streaming down my wife's face. The children stared vacantly at her, not knowing what was happening. I picked up our oldest child and rushed to the master bedroom. My wife was behind me, struggling to get the other child to safety. She came into the room and slammed the door, just as the figures came around the corner. I began to move the dresser, a wedding gift from our in-laws, to cover the door. My wife set the child down and put her shoulder to the huge wooden object. Within seconds, we were standing at the window, deciding what the next move would be. An annoying pounding began on the door, matching the pounding in my head. I opened the window and stepped into the night air. Around me was total chaos. From where I stood, I could see the majority of the town. In the distance, I could see several tiny fires, magnified by the cracking, screaming, crashing, and crying of destruction. Down on the street, the figures occupied every available space. I turned to my family and helped them out of the house. Give me the keys, I said to my wife. She reached into her pocket and produced our means of survival. The rickety ladder on the side of the house was waiting to be used. It was a good thing I hadn't put off painting any longer. The figures became aware of a lunch's presence and began to gather around the ladder. I finally realized my child's question as I took one last look around and began to descend the rotten ladder into hell. Jeepers. Um, I, I'm pretty sure somewhere in my archives, I never finished this story, um, but I know I wrote an ending somewhere. I'm going to have to find it and perhaps share that, but I, I did complete some kind of ending. I don't remember what it was, but I recall vaguely that there's there's pages out there with an ending. So, um, yeah, that was written around 16, 17 years old. Um, it's interesting going through. Uh, my husband suggested I should read from the beginning of my writings to see how it progressed, but I can just see it right here, how much it's it changed from the early zombie stories, which I'll hopefully read to you later. Um, so that's A New Beginning, a uh, zombie tale from high school. Um I'll be back tomorrow to share some more goodies with you. Uh, again, that run down nostalgia lane and maybe get a laugh, although I thought this was actually pretty good. I'm kind of surprised. Um, so please be safe. Be smart. I hope you're well stocked and um, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.